If one were to say that the Myotics Caster is the most comfortable mouse, then this mouse right here, the Logitech G502, well, it's damn well the most versatile. I mean, look at all of the buttons here, people. You have a left click, a right click, thumb buttons, three of them, in fact. You have DPI switches that make it go up and down, and it has an LED indicator to show you where you are with your DPI. It even has a third DPI switch. The scroll wheel can go from clicky to smooth. The scroll wheel itself is even three buttons. You can press it in, you can press it to the left, and you can press it to the right. And because you can switch in macro buttons and change the button settings, these DPI switches up here, you can actually make them to actual game buttons. So if you're a gamer who needs a lot of buttons or wants a lot of buttons, then look no further. The G502 is here for you. Now, again, the Meowth's Caster does not have this feature, but you can actually put weights in the bottom of the mouse if you want it heavier or lighter, depending on how you feel about a mouse. That's pretty cool, too. No screws or anything involved in opening the mouse. It just clicks in and clicks out because it's magnetic. Here are the weights right here. Nothing too big or nothing too burly. Easy to get in and easy to get out. But um, one thing I do not like about this mouse is that the caster just feels like it glides smoother. This right here, I always feel as if there's some sort of, I can't even tell you, intangible resistance to moving this thing. Like, I can never get it too precise, and I can never get it exactly the way I want it to be. But again, if you are a person that does not like using the keyboard, for example, Blacktooth Grin, he does not like using a lot of buttons on the keyboard. He prefers to have most of his in-game buttons on a mouse. You have all of the options right here at your disposal. And you have a nice little thumb rest on the left hand side. Get a little grip there. A little grip on the opposite side as well, but it's your typical Actually, I can't even call it your typical standard mouse because this mouse is something out of a Transformer movie. I don't know what to tell you, but let's go on over to the software side and I'll show you that real quick. Okay, so let's take a quick look at all the features and software of the Logitech G502. You have onboard memory and you have PC memory, automatic game detection. You can go over into the next screen and you can change up all of your buttons right here. If you want extra buttons, you can disable the DPI settings and change them to actual buttons. You have three different profiles. You have different DPI sensitivity levels ranging all the way up to, I believe, 12,000, I believe. Let's see. Yes, 12,000. So if you can game at 12,000, you are, as I said in the Meonix Cast Review, beyond human. And then again, you also have your polling rate, which goes from 125 hertz the lowest to 1,000 at the highest. Moving on, you have your different lighting settings. You can lower and raise the brightness of the G on the mouse. It only comes in one color, that is blue. You can actually create a breathing effect if that's what you want to. And as you can see it right here, you can have the DPI lights always on. And I don't know why you would because then you don't know where your DPI settings are going to be. And you actually have a sleep timer on the mouse as well. Let's say you have your mouse and your keyboard and your gaming set up in your bedroom. Well. You don't want your mouse to be lit up all night if you want to go to bed and you want to have it at a sleep time for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, it will shut down and you can get some shut eye. Likewise, the Meonix Caster also has a surface tuning software which allows you to register your mouse on different surfaces to get the optimal gaming performance. As you can see right here, I have the ice mat and I do not have the gaming series G MSI mat because I had switched over mouses beforehand. And that is pretty much the conclusion of the G502 software. So in closing, the G502 is a very good mouse. Unfortunately, I do not like it as much as the Meonix Caster because one, I just feel like I, I, I don't get it. There's some intangible element here that does not allow me to get this thing to move as precisely and as effective as I want. I feel like I'm fighting this mouse a lot. Another thing I do not like is the side thumb buttons right here. They are rectangular. They are not smooth. They are edgy. And I don't know why anybody would make any kind of edged buttons. It's weird. And I do like the sniper button, but the problem is if you're holding the mouse regularly by the thumb right here, reaching up to that sniper button right up here is difficult. So what I primarily used to do is have my thumb on the sniper button and then move it upwards to the page forward button, which would mean I'm completely ignoring the rear page back button, but it is what it is. It's hard to go from one area to the other quickly. But what you can do 
is have it like this where your thumb is by the sniper button and the page forward button and then use probably that rear button as a push to talk button for team speak skype and things like that the dpi on the switch on the fly thing is very amazing the scroll wheel is also amazing i wish the caster had something like that but all in all i would recommend this mouse i mean again it is not a bad mouse i just have some slight nuances with it i like the weight control and things like that if i could get like this mouse merged with the caster i would probably get the all-time perfect mouse but hey we don't live in a perfect world now do we